quite often there's a lot of people that are spoofing about what they know, and because they seem to have oh, the yeah. confidence <laughs> about what they're doing, they can get on to do other things. And everyone and their mother now is starting to do a podcast. Everyone and their mother, we're all videoing ourselves. We've recently been working on a little project which we didn't want to abandon, and it forced us to re-look at what we'd done so we could see if we could make improvements. So we had a what we might call a happy accident as we started to investigate um, animation techniques, <laughs> which is all good fun. Now, I, I suppose we're always trying to, we're, we're quite often we tend to over criticize what we're doing. We tend to overwork things at times and we, we maybe overcook things and the dinner gets burnt, as you might say. And I think uh, on this occasion, we suddenly realized, look, this, there's some really nice content that we've got. We don't want to lose it. And let's look at an alternative. And this is something that we want to try and explore in this particular episode. Uh, we're going to call it Happy Ask. Ac Happy accidents. So, well, now, there, oh, this is good. I didn't realize this would actually um, align serendipitous in language to something. What popped into my, you know, stopped using another word. Here's another kind of phrase I've come up with, which has popped into my head. Popped into my head. As soon as George has said something, something pops into my head. And I can't wait to say what it is. And it's, the first thing was, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Yes, you know, yeah. we, we, we had something. Now, throw the baby out. A happy accident. We gave, this is our baby. We gave birth to our baby. We don't want to throw it out with the bathwater. It has value. But it could have been an ugly looking baby to start with. This baby was ugly. It didn't mean to be. It had a nice personality. The problem was I smudged my camera lens because I was a bit of a, a an infant in terms of I didn't understand the production process and what a camera's for and what you, you're meant to check things beforehand and I had put a big dirty greasy smudge over the over the vision the view the view part of the camera so a week later when we're looking at this production or this output I can't. We can't see anything. It's all. It's all smudged. Well, it had, no, it not had only the, the smudge. Um, it had the Joan Collins look in the Star Trek episodes, it, where it looked <laughs> as if you were looking through a dirty window. You were. You were. You were the window cleaner. It gave it a, a nice cleaning romantic windows. look. You know, it was just that kind of yeah. smudge to take away all and the heavy details. <laughs> it was smudged, and then to add 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 insult to injury. Skype decided that day that what that it was that I think everyone was in lockdown everyone was on the internet that it it actually it would we'd, we'd put the right sound on but it decided to, to remove it and crunch it then the actual internet dropped so then, then, then it was out of my lips are flapping in the wind at the best of times but now they're out of sync with myself in terms of where the voice should be so I have a smudged head I'm, my lips are flapping out of sync with the with the with the quality of what's being said. This is the quality of audio. God forbid the quality of content or the value of the of of the words being used. So George, in his wisdom and his skill set, and uh, was able to save the baby. He was able to. You know, give it a bit of desk. No, I was going to say desktop publishing, but I think that when you're looking at a baby, maybe it's a. He was able to beautify it a bit. He's able to dress it up a little bit more. Well, initially, initially, I'd edited it together to try and see if I could link in several cameras to try and make make it work, and it kind of was working. And we were kind of going on the premise that basically we were we were hoping to document our development. But what happened was that when we did release one of the earlier episodes. Somebody made a comment about the quality and that it was the kind of standard they would expect from us. And we I then suddenly had to go back and look at it and kind of go, hmm, they're going to be disappointed. That's a bit of a derogatory comment if you're going to be negative or positive. <laughs> the kind of the kind of quality to expect from us, which is nothing. We expect nothing Whoa. from you. That's exactly what we expected. Crap. Now we were we thought we were improving in our one to two to three jump, and we were willing to show that this is where we were having our quandary of we're twenty episodes in in production, but we're three or four on release, and that was us trying to get the right equipment, trying to learn, get a rhythm, get a process. But that was then not aligned with where we were in terms of what our new quality is versus what our old quality was. But this this baby was an ugly baby. This baby didn't. It looked as if it wasn't even adopted. It looked like someone came in and swapped the kids in in the birthing suite. I'm going. No, we want to keep. 
we want keep to that going, yeah. keep this baby. So if we're going to keep the baby, we want to make sure it's ours. And if it's ours, it. we want the well, baby. The podcast we, we side of it was working really, really well. There wasn't really any issues with the sound that we had, the, the really good sound that we had. Well, me talking is an issue at the best of times. <laughs> and that's the sound that was ha- that we were having. But Well, we, we we knew that we got a sound production that was working really well. And then I, I suddenly found uh, Adobe Character Animate. And I found that, it 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 was pushing the idea that you could put a still image or a, of a, an animated character, and it will automatically turn it into a puppet for you that would follow your image. So you, you see, you're seeing my image here, and it would, I like it that. Would la- I like that language there. You no, know, an animated character. Yeah, two D character. I am an animated character at the best of times. And what started to make sense there was we were talking about anime. My, my kids would be talking about anime, and I go, I'm not too sure. I mix up anime with with with. Uh, um, manga you know the card plus <laughs> manga and I go it, it's interchangeable I'm not even sure what half it is but we're sick to the anime bit being well, one, of the, one of the things I'm- is that you're animated but you don't lose your definition and what was happening was I was producing these drawings that would do the job that we were hoping they would do. But when you put it into this system, it mished and mashed and suddenly it turned into a horrible alien character that I thought was going to jump out. And it was eat actually me. less animus than the more animus character. Yeah, you'll see I the am. eyes that it would turn so out. Whoa, we, and that was we, me. We, there's <laughs> the weird thing. We arrived at a conversation that's saying, no, who would want to look at these two old cultures on screen for any more than. No, we want this to be a, a podcast. Podcast. You hopefully you listen to the story or some learnings or some memories or some uh, mentoring or some something of interest, something of value, something of entertainment, and there be someone else in the room. It's gonna be listen to the value or listen out and watch out for it. It's not to look at us. It's to, we, now we can be entertaining in our, in our mannerisms, but over time that might be too ugly to look at for too long a time, and we are suddenly realizing. Yo, know, this could we we're we're better looking Muppets. We well, we can fragilize ourselves. We can get our superhero anime character, and that could be more interesting than us ourselves if we can put those personalities on it. And then then at least they could have an audience. We could have a license to go talk. But I mean, and this is where well, it kind of we're starting uh, to arrive. Well, though that was episode three that we were, we were having sort of issues with, which has now become episode 10 because we've remodeled it. But episode seven suddenly had something special in it as well. That was the universe. And although we were we were planning on if the universe has nothing special in yeah, it, yeah, absolutely, you might as well give well, up now. I, yeah. I think that's it. That it, it, there was there was something there was something about the content of what we were doing that needed and required additional imagery other than just me or you, and that sent me on my filmmaking documentary kind of mode and I ended up sort of adding lots of image just to see what it would look like, whether it'd work and I had to add some music. Now it took longer than what our normal shows would do. So it was kind of, is this a viable thing to do? But actually it 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 changed the dynamics of what we were doing. It can't be done all the time, but it, it leads us to suddenly realize that through the happy accident that basically we could do one of these every so often. What we weren't expecting is is what then became number 10, which was our original three, which is numbers, that that could potentially become something special. We we were starting to observe on the likes of LinkedIn that still images were getting more traction than some of the videos that we were putting up. So we thought, well, what kind of image could we do? And I'd done a couple of little rough sketches and we tried those out and that seemed seemed to kind of work. And it led to the spark of an idea that maybe what we could do is take something similar, redraw it properly in in uh, character anime. In fact, I did it in Illustrator first, and then bring in a in a, what is a puppet. They become puppet characters that then follow us. Uh, through the magic of all the computers and all the other stuff. And in business, <laughs> the strange thing is in, in business language, <clears throat> excuse me, what we're we're finding is there's an element of this language of USP or unique selling point or differential. How do you differentiate yourself from others? Oh, and in this case it was other videos. We were seeing everybody start and everyone and their mother now is starting to do a podcast. Everyone and their mother is starting to do put a video. Well, if you've got a camera or a camera phone, we're all videoing ourselves 
doing X, Y, and Z, A, B, and C, and one, two, and three, and we're putting it up on LinkedIn, and, and, and we don't even know, most of us don't even know why, including our good selves. Well, we're just putting it up because the machine says yeah, so. Yeah, and I think one of the, but, one of the difficulties is, is that as as we are reaching into our sort of fifties, and and and, and there is, there's there's me, there's you, and there's all these other people that I'm. I'm oh, you're arguing. reaching further than uh, I am. Yeah, I'm I've reached a little bit. I'm, I'm on the back end of that. It's, <laughs> it's terrible. But there's a few people that have started to realise. Hang on a second. We have a wealth of knowledge that really what we want to do is to share that with the world. So it wasn't because we wanted to make ourselves more important than we probably are. What we wanted to do is to say- uh, You have your own opinion. Well, you, yeah. I certainly you, you do. Certainly do. <laughs> well, apart from Garvin, apart from Garvin, he's not the yeah. normal kind of person. Uh, I'm investing in narcissism here. And I'm going, it's my self-importance yeah. is he, my biggest he's investment. A, he's actually really a millennial. That's in disguise. <laughs> That's what that is. Because apparently they're the narcissistic generation. Although apparently the baby boomers are which is where i'm i fit into that as well so i don't know but but the thing is that you 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 and maybe that's being narcissistic thinking that you've actually got a body of knowledge that you can actually pass on to other people but having been a lecturer and having taught others and having seen the value that they were getting from me talking about the stories of my own experience you do begin to realize hang on if we don't if we hold this back we're actually depriving another generation even if it's just a few people of some quite important pieces of knowledge that could help them get through some of the current problems that they may be experiencing and in their work life or other forms of life. It's to be relatable, I think, was what we're trying to be. We relate to ourselves. We, we should be relatable to others. And these others, by definition, should be the, would be the more meaningful or audience that, or should the, the audience that will get more value out of what we're saying? Because what we're really saying to ourselves, first of all, foremost, is is it's okay. It's okay to change. It's okay to try something new. It's it's okay to trial and error. It's okay to fail and fail fast and get on with it. It's not the end of the world. And we're we don't know. And we, that's the honest thing is we don't know because the amount of new. Uh, new algorithms in LinkedIn's and Facebooks and Googles and YouTubes. We're going. We're barely able to. I'm barely able to tie my shoelaces in the morning. Not never mind. Figure out you know Facebook groups and and how to get SEO'd and pay PPC'd up the yin yang. You're going. But we. This is what's. This is the onslaught to people in small business. They they have to be all functions. They want to be the product, but they have to be the marketing and sales as well. Well, in the absence of someone else, and whoever the other someone else is, they don't themselves because they have that function doesn't make them the expert and it won't guarantee them success and visibility to their target audience because of the clutter and noise that's now in the system because everybody can put something out there now it's very difficult to see through it for the customer and they're being put off very very quickly and don't give people the time they would would have maybe gave them in the past you have to catch my attention quick you have to entertain me or I am gone. So you've got to now. One of the things that you've got to get you have you have to reach the audience. Now, some of the things that I've started to realise is that we 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 quite often when we when we encounter others, we kind of put them up on a pedestal. We we assume they know more than us because they must do. Because what do I know? We 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 knock ourselves down. And what you then begin to realise is is actually they don't know more than you. Uh, quite of, quite often, there's a lot of people that are spoofing about what they know, and because they seem to have oh, the yeah. confidence <laughs> about what they're doing, they can get on to do other things. And and you begin Fake to realize, it till you make it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, then then in in that sense, if if you if you re you don't have to be an expert to get things moving forward. What you do have to do is to have the confidence to put the first step forward and start to experiment, try things out, see what happens, and not be frightened of failure if those little things don't work the way you expect them to. I mean, the, the other thing is that uh, I, I didn't realize that I was producing branded material until Garvin came along and said to me, oh, George, you can use that image for this. That's branding us. Oh, you can use this. That's brand. Let's use it. So we're already pushing this stuff out. The main thing is not to throw it in the bin. A lot of people who, who become perfectionists, which we'll explore in the next episode, they actually start to become so, oh, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect that they end up killing their own product before it's had a chance to live. 
Whereas what they could have done is got maybe massive amounts of versions of variations of that, that they could have been developing and their skills on. And then there's a journey because there's a story from start to finish where that, pro that idea has evolved and you're allowing another audience to see that evolution as you're going through. And we are now enjoying that kind of process because we're having these conversations. We're having separate conversations, but what we're also starting to discover is that they they trigger little ideas that we we hadn't realized. We, we never had any expectations, but suddenly there's an idea that takes you on a really interesting journey. And the the what we've now experienced, which is in episode 10 of, of um, Numbers with the animated characters that we've done, there's other possibilities of where we can now start to animate guests who might be real guests or fictitious guests or whatever you want them to be, fictional guests. But we can start to develop ideas and explore other, other avenues that we hadn't originally thought about until we came across the problems, the happy accidents that we're now mm. experiencing. It's this organic, that's, if we're using our earlier shows and the language is hidden in it, it's, you know, we're, we ask the universe, we ask the universe for help. And most of the time you're meant to say, ask for something particular or more specific, like I, I can't, I used to use better words, I can't use my lips for words like specific, but I mean, it's, we, we're realizing that we, we have to make ourselves different to other, any business, to, you have to differentiate. For to stand out in the crowd, you know, what's your unique selling points? What's your brand? What's your brand versus someone else? You know, why you, why would I buy you or why would I listen to you over someone else? You know, that's the question. So this brand, this organic journey to why are we, di what's dif what do we like about ourselves? What's different from us to someone else? Why would someone listen to us? Who is our audience? This is falling out of our own conversations, our own journey. We, I, I, I in particular get a little bit disheartened on the numbers of this particular episode, name, or that particular episode we're talking about his name, is I'm looking for the affirmation very, very early on that we're at episode seven that went live with Universe. And that figure is actually a statistical figure that's out there that's saying most people that have a podcast give up after seven because they lost faith, didn't get their audience, didn't know what they're doing or not. Now we're 27 in. So even if we wanted to give up for the seven live, we have to put up the next 20 uh, for the next three months while we're at it. But we're, we ha we're actually arriving at these affirmations of statistics that are out there. You cannot realistically expect the audience to be there after seven. It hasn't gone out there in the algorithms. It didn't have a budget on our marketing push or spend to get extra numbers. So why would you expect it? We're just posting it willy-nilly on, on into Facebook and LinkedIn because they said someone said we can, but we're throwing those, we're, another one of our episodes there, we're just getting a quiver of arrows and shooting it out the universe and seeing where it hits. We're not turning targeting anything. We're not aiming or talking to our audience. We're saying our non-audience hasn't reciprocated and joined and subscribed. They were never meant to. We, we we don't know who we're hitting. And if they're saying it's not for us, then we're feeling that as rejection when it was never for them. So we, we know now in the last couple of weeks, and why would we expect these results from doing the wrong thing? So be affirm what you've done, which is the production process, but now learn what the what targeted marketing or who what's your show about who's it for, who would it resonate with and are you actually targeting them with the right tools and and, and methodologies you know, if, for want of a better word no one of the other key things is that um, you have to be prepared to change direction if where the happy accidents take you suddenly reveal something unexpected that you now should go off. Now, there, there were a couple of other YouTube channel people who were, they had about five or six channels. They were putting a lot of effort and time. They had a team. They were working away and they were starting to make decisions and they suddenly thought that one, one particular channel that wasn't doing very well as far as they were concerned, they were going to start to close it down. But one of them had an idea, well, okay, let's just do a, it. I think it was about nursery rhymes. It was for children. They'd been producing their own music and they were getting nobody interested. So that what they thought was, well, we'll go out with a bang, we'll use an old nursery rhyme, we'll do this, use that production, and then we'll just shut up shop with that particular channel and concentrate on some of the others. Well, they did the little video, the last video they were going to do, and all of a sudden they launched it and it took off in a massive amount 
They they got millions of people or thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. It totally shocked them. And what they realized was that they'd been on the wrong track. They thought they should be trying to promote their own music, where it turned out old fashioned nursery rhymes that the audience, which turned out to be mums with kids, knew could relate to. They'd suddenly tapped into a market that they hadn't been aware of. It was a happy accident that took them in a totally new touched, direction. Exactly. We touched this on this before, or nearly everyone has at some stage. You, 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 if you're selling to the wrong, if you're in the wrong room, if I'm an accountant in a room full of full of accountants and everyone's trying to sell something and no one's buying, then it's a bit pointless. So therefore, you know, what room is your audience in? Well, our show, which one of the happy accidents was a bit of the branding that George did there was the two two little anime characters and he just chucked on one of our backdrops and it pretty much was the definition of our entire branded show. It's 52 Jokers Wild in the room in one image and I'm saying, I'm going to print it and put it on the wall. It was a happy accent, but it actually resonated with me and him. And it says, this is your show in one view, in one image. It doesn't matter what the, you know, it's just who's the guest or what the element of the room is or what the subject matter is and what day of the week and when and where. It's, this is the show. This is you. This is unique. No one else has it. This is branded. You can run with it now. And, and, and now you can wrap these processes around it and what we're the happy journey that we're on the last let's say 10 weeks is is if we ignore one thing a little bit and get up to speed on our production process and package it then we're in a rhythm now we can concentrate on what's in the box and the value of what's in the box we can now change and 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 basically the baby we're going to get this baby. We're going to dress it up. We're going to help it grow. We're going to give it a personality and it's going to get legs. Now, one of, one of the one of the things that uh, quite often occurs is is when people start to doubt themselves about what they're what they're working on. But we we have now started to find that by simply opening the door and going with uh, the first production, we then suddenly had an idea and we got the second production very quickly. Just we, we, It wasn't perfect. It was never going to be perfect, but it gave us the opportunity to, to really launch, a step, launch ourselves and, and step into the, the waters to see what we can actually achieve. And by continuously, uh, consistently and persistently carrying on to do these kind of shows, we've now ended up with a nice collection that we're gradually building more. Uh, hopefully and more for. not aimlessly. No, no, no. I think. <laughs> just, uh, I think. That, no. What, what, what's what's quite what's quite interesting is that they aren't just aimless. They we we do have a direction. I think that the sense of of coming up with a core theme that we keep sort of linking back to uh, isn't a happy accident. We've actually <laughs> nurtured that in in the way that we've been doing things. But what we've discovered is that if we can relax in the processes that we're going through, not take things overly seriously and enjoy what we're doing, then we are in ourselves open to possibilities that we never thought possible when we started the journey. And now we're back to the, 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 these dementoring books of sorts and the language of same and everything from the artist's way to the the, 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 the joint put in and feel the fear and do it anyway. It's the strange thing is that's that's why while you were talking, that's why I was hearing. I was saying I was going through this. It's yeah, some, something dies and then you get or no, or it's the fear, it's the panic. Then you go, but once you recognise it quick, the charter box is starting to go and I go. I don't know, quieten it, quieten it down quick and go. It's okay. You can be, you can have no affirmation. The world doesn't love you. Then you go patch yourself in the back. And go look, don't worry, it's okay. No, get yourself back up and just collect your thoughts and don't don't overdwell on that. Let's move on. We'll try again. We'll we'll try again and we'll try something new and let's test. Is this trial and error? Just testing. Just dipping a foot in, taking it out. It's not going all at, all in. You know, on that swim we talked about before, where we'll swim more than halfway and keep on going, knowing we're going to run out of breath. It's no no. We're going for the marathon, as you, you said before. It's the hare and the tortoise, and one of them is on speed. I don't know which one. But it's we're going in. We're in the race. It's a marathon. We're going to run it. We don't know what the curves are going to bring us, but we're not, we will have these, I think, what the, these curves. We're going to second guess every other week. We're going to 
everything that happens if it's not positive immediately for anybody is it's why me or what did I do wrong and, and no one even knows half the time all this stuff is in our heads people haven't even opened up their phone and looked at the thing yet to re- you haven't even been rejected yet you've rejected you on the basis of something thinking they've already looked and they may never look which is more the point because you've put it into this funnel and they're over there so it's this targeting is is uh, is is leading leading to this um self-rejection and feeding fear whereas if we can just quieten it we can we can get on quickly move on and develop now i i know that in the past i've had situations where uh quite often about 20 years ago maybe even 10 years ago the the computer systems weren't as um solid as they seem to be today and and quite often computers would crash and all kinds of things and i remember being in in the middle of several edits and and the edits were getting quite complicated that you you found yourself going down avenues that you just kind of didn't quite feel right about and but you you'd gone down there and you just thought well i better persist i better persist and then all of a sudden the computer would crash and you'd find that the whole lot of your work had gone um, and, and in that situation, all the people would go off and bang their heads against walls and sort of really scream and say, what's going on? But what I found was that actually that was perfect because that now allowed me that happy accident. You could turn it into a happy accident. It wasn't a drama, but you suddenly could start afresh. But you had the knowledge of the previous edit in your head and you suddenly found yourself working away and then you were allowed because you had actually lost the stuff you were given the opportunity to try something new and fresh that took you on that new exciting journey and you ended up with something far richer far better because the computer had crashed now, and lost yes. everything you're now building with the answer in mind because you already know what it looks like and you're actually reverse engineering from where you already got to, but with purpose and speed. And that's like, that's, that, there's an awful lot of, um, the, actually, I saw something on LinkedIn only the other day. Uh, no, they went to the, fur, the full extreme and said, to help these uh, successful people or other people be more successful, they were getting them to write their own obituary. And then this, this is the legacy and the story you're leaving behind. Are you happy with it as it currently stand or do you want to write something else in that doesn't currently exist and that would then would lead you to give you that goal now? So when you read this obituary, it is then more reflective of the life you, you, you're about to have as opposed to the one you've had to date. So th- that was interesting. I thought it was a bit more, but at the same time, it was meant to be a little bit more on the affirmative side of forget the obituary and go, Build with the end in mind. What we, we touched on it before and said, what does the future you look like? Walk, talk, dress, eat, drink, smile, family, you know, holidays, and bring it forward. You don't need to make a 15-year plan. If you know what it looks like now, you can you can we can align our actions and plans and tactics to that. But most and of all people I know are more reactive and they're they're waiting for things to turn. How will life turn out? As a po- based on what turned up, as opposed to proactively working towards some sort of targeted goal and vision. You see, that's very interesting because I know that uh, I, I've had friends and family members suddenly kind of go, oh, I, I could do this. Do you think that's the right thing to do? And you kind of go, well, well, what do you think? Because what's what's wrong with going in that direction if you if that's where you feel you you know you've got an inclination to go in? Why not just explore it? It doesn't matter if you you know why why you think it's the right or wrong. Why does it have to be so black and white? Why can't it just be a grey area that you want to explore and just see how it goes? And even just the value of that moment or two in that area would be quite useful to help direct you and guide you in which direction to go into next. I'm t- I think I'm more open to that now. That's what's happened in the last you know, six months to me. Before, I said, if I went back in time, I said, maybe be an extra in a movie or, 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 or that. I go, no. I, I, if I didn't get the part, no matter how small the part, then I feel rejected. I couldn't possibly apply for another one. As opposed to there was 500 people in the queue, you just didn't look like the part. Therefore, that's the reason you got rejected, not because you couldn't do it, but you just had no hair and they didn't want to buy a wig. But, I mean, we don't, we're, we're assuming it's rejection as if we're the only one where there's 500 better people and it's a limited choice set. So if you have 500 manuscripts go in or 500 business plan goes in and, and they only have funds for one and only want to pick one and the first one that meets their criteria, the other 4999 
are not actually rejected, but to the individuals they are. But they weren't even looked at and they could have been better choices. So is this, is this lack of alignment of you know, what constitutes rejection? Who rejected who? Is that what they wanted? Were you a target right customer? It's we, don't, it's we should just get back to JK Rowling, case in point, lots of case in point. We have to try more things, do more things, trial and error, give it a go, give it a last jack, whatever the language is, and then do it again. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Now, one of the great things is that uh, when this show goes out, it'll probably be sort of late, Oct late August, early September time. And and we so we're coming just out of this kind of lockdown sort of period in, in our reality. In their reality, we don't know where things are. But but what what's really good is I've just had a conversation with a colleague of mine and we, we actually discussed the fact that this current lockdown for us was actually a positive thing. It was another happy accident because it allowed the brakes to be put on. It allowed, it restricted what we could actually do. And it gave us the opportunity to reevaluate our lives and start to move in different directions. In fact, it gave us the opportunity to take the directions that we've always wanted to do, but were too frightened to do. We had no other excuses to actually hold us back but to let go and try out these new ideas. And that actually is a lot of fun. And you suddenly realize that life is more valuable than you think because, you know, you can now start to explore things that you, you've been putting off, putting off and putting off. And if you're not careful before you know it, you've got no time to put it off too. You've got to do it now. And I, I think... I've had a conversation this morning with an old neighbour of mine. I just went over to visit someone and then this neighbour popped up. And the, the conversation of the day is, as you can only guess, you know, the, the lockdown. And how are you getting on? And, and it was good. The weird thing is, for both of us, it was great. I never enjoyed it more. I got rid of the work because I was spending 20 hours in a car getting from A to B and I have this 20 hours back. Now, I may not be earning the same amount of money, but I said, what happened was mindfulness. What happened was time with children. What happened was a reassessment of what's important. And what what we're now doing is I'm try we're trying things we wouldn't have tried before. He was actually saying the the man's no, the women please you know, the man's list of things to do which were being it's a big list and it was always on the never ever and an awful lot of those men's lists have been fully ticked and done in the last six months and they never thought would get done the house is painted from top to bottom the garden is looking like the hanging gardens of Babylon every little bell and whistle has been shined and it, it, that, that's the weird thing now we're, and and they're now looking at each other going I never liked you I never loved you don't know we have nothing in common because you're never there before I think there's going to be a massive amount of divorces <laughs> and, a ma and a big baby boom to boot it's going to be the two extremes because people were forced back into this situation now forget that I don't know where I went off on a little tangent there but but half the people I talked to it I suppose that's the 50 50 breakdown half was panic half was pessimism half was was oh whoa and other half was never better more alignment with family and friends and mindfulness. So now again, there's different sets of excuses for both and, and there's different sets of living circumstances, but there's a massive wake up call. And the one thing for me and possibly George is, is we cannot afford not to do things. We cannot afford not to take risks. Not gambles, is what we're saying risks and a lot of uh, gambling. We're not gambling, we're measuring risk and we're going in eyes open but we're taking it. We're doing it measured and we're not not doing it anymore because you could just wake up dead. Now, this episode has been all about happy accidents. So if it seems to be a happy accident that you've now experienced this particular YouTube channel or the podcast version of our program, please subscribe and follow and share. But check out some of our other podcasts and some of our other videos because there could be some really good things that you might learn by accident. Thanks for listening. There are no accidents in the universe. This was meant to happen. So catch you soon. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications.